اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد سلام عليكم يا علي مدد As we know, we have started a new series of lecture regarding the history and fazail of the 14 Masumin alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. In my last lecture, we discussed about Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Tonight, we will discuss about another Imam, about another Masum. Tonight, we will discuss about Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Imam Zainul Abidin has many, many famous titles. The, few, the famous title of our fourth Imam is Sayyid Sajjad. Sayyid Sajjad means the constantly prostrating one. And his second known title is Zainul Abidin, which means adornment of the worshippers. Imam Zainal Abidin, as we all know, is the fourth Imam for the Shia. The period of his Imamat was 34 years. He was present in the Battle of Karbobala, but he could not participate in the battle because of his sickness, and that is why he was not murdered. He was taken captive from Kufa and Damascus together with other captives of Karbobala. His speech at the presence of the Umayyad Caliph created awareness among the people. <clears throat> among the people about the position of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad After being released he stayed in Medina until the end of his life Now I will tell you about two very important books about, written by Imam Zainul Abidin two important books that we discuss when we talk about Imam Zainul Abidin The first book is called Sahifa al Sajidiya Sahifa al Sajjadiyah. Sahifa al Sajjadiyah. This is a compilation of his supplication, which reflects to the picture of society, the day, and the true path of life through the education of the religion and the Quran and the purification of the souls and the connection to Allah. Basically, in this book, we find a compilation of supplication which talk about reflect the picture of the society that day the true path of life through the education of the religion through the education of the quran and the purification of the soul and connecting our souls to allah the second book is called risalat al-hukuk it's not risalat al-hukuk also some people may know it as treatise on rights treatise on rights what is treatise on rights what is Risalat al hukuk Well, this is his other work, which contains 51 rights. A rights about our body, rights of a teacher, of a parent, of a children, rights of the parts of certain body parts. It is a short treatise containing duties a human being has. In general, 51 rights that talk about the rights of us, our parents, grandparents, teachers, our body parts, rights of our fingers of our ears of our eyes it's a short compilation of treatise that talk about the 51 rights a human being has i think we all know that imam sajjad our fourth imam was the son of imam hussein our third imam imam sajjad his mother was bibi shaharbano who was an iranian princess and of course the wife of imam hussein imam sajjad was married to fatima binti hassan the daughter of Imam Hassan. The children of Imam Sajjad was the, the children of Imam Sajjad, the famous ones are, as we all know, Imam Muhammad Bakir. The mother of Imam Muhammad Bakir was Bibi Fatima binti Hassan, who was the wife of Imam Sajjad. Imam Zainul Abidin had other children, such as once I already named the Imam Muhammad Bakir. There was one of his son, uh, Abdullah, there was Al Hassan. We have Al Hussein. We also have Abdul Rahman. But do you know that one of his famous son, one famous character in Islam, is the son of Imam Sajjad? When I talk about this famous character, I am referring to Hadrat Zaid alayhi salam. As we all know, us Zaidi Sadat, we come from the descendants of Hazrat Zaid. He was murdered in Kufa during the Umayyad Khilafat. Hazrat Zaid is one of the famous sons of Imam Sajjad and 
and Zedi Sadat come from the descendants of Hazrat Zed. As I mentioned in the beginning, Imam Sajjad was present during the Battle of Karbala. And on the day of Imam Hussain and his companions were murdered, Imam Sajjad was severely sick, severely ill. Because Allah wanted to continue the Khilafat, which is why Allah saved Imam Zainul Abidin, Imam Sajjad. After the tragedy of Karbala, they captured the family of Imam Hussain. They took them to Kufa and Damascus. Upon taking them from Karbala to Kufa, they put Jami'a. Jami'a means putting hand to neck chains on Imam Zainul Abidin. And since, as I mentioned, Imam Zainul Abidin was extremely sick and he could not keep sitting on the back of the camel, they fastened his feet under the belly of the camel. You can see by me explaining this the hate they had towards the Ahlul Bayt, the hate they had towards the family of Imam Hussein. Once Imam Sajjad was in the mosque of Damascus, Imam Sajjad, he gave a speech in the mosque of Damascus. He introduced himself, he introduced his father Hussein, he introduced his grandfather as well. And he told the people of Damascus, the people, he told the people of Damascus that everything Yazid and his agents have said, have propagated, are not true and are just a lie. His father, Imam Sajjad, said, My father was not a rebel. He did not want to disturb the Muslim community and make mischief in Islamic land. He rose for truth and by invitation of the Muslims to remove heresis brought up in the religion and bring the simplicity and purity it had at the time of his grandfather. Imam Zainul Abidin explained that all Yazid and his agent said is not true. And he explained who Imam Hussein was. As I mentioned, Imam Sajjad lived 34 years after, after the battle of Karbala and always made efforts to keep the memory of the merchants of Karbala alive. We know that whenever Imam Sajjad drank water, he remembered his father and wept on the hardship of Imam Hussein. It is mentioned from a narration of Imam Sadiq that Imam Sajjad would cry for 40 years. 40 years Imam Sajjad cried upon his honorable father. While he was fasting the days and he was praying the night. At the time of breaking his fast, when his servant took the food and water from him, he said, the grandson of Rasulullah Hussain was murdered hungry. He said, the grandson of Rasulullah Hussain was murdered thirst thirsty. Imam Sajjad frequently repeated this phrase and he would cry so much that his tears would mix with his food and the drinks. He was in such state of grief until he passed away 34 years later after, tra after the tragedy of Karbobala. By reading the Masaib of Imam Zainul Abidin, we can see how much grief, how much sorrow he had for the passing of his father, Imam Hussain. My Azadar, please remember, please recite Allah Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. May Allah give us tawfiq to visit the holy shrine of Imam Zainul Abidin and to visit Karbobala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My Azadar, I would also like to add a little bit of information about these days. As we all know, these days are the, are the days of commemoration of the martyrdom of Imam Raza, our eighth Imam. As we all know, Imam Raza was murdered in Mashhad. He was poisoned by the Abbasid Khalifa, Mamun Rashid. Imam Raza, he was murdered in Mashhad and he was poisoned by the Abbasid Khalifa, Mamun Rashid. As we all know, Imam, he was alone in Mashhad. He had nobody beside him. His brother, his sisters, his brother, he had many siblings, but they were all in Medina. Imam Raza, he was alone in Mashhad. 
Also, our ninth Imam, the son of our eighth Imam, Imam Raza, Imam Taki, our ninth Imam, once again, he was also very alone in Medina. He was not with his father. Imam Raza, he was alone, separated from his father, separated from his family, thousands of kilometers apart in Mashhad. He was all alone during the time of his martyrdom. But my Azada, we all know Imam Raza, he had a very famous sister. We all know the name of his sister. His sister, Bibi Masu Maikum. She was, she is the very famous sister of Imam Raza. And I can guarantee that everybody has heard the name of Bibi Masu Maikum in Majalises. She traveled far from Medina all the way to Iran so she could meet her brother Imam Raza. But my Azadar, when she reached the city of Qom, she heard that the people, she heard from the people that Imam Raza, Imam Raza was murdered. Imam Raza had passed away in Mashhad. Bibi, Bibi Masumai Qom, she could not reach Mashhad. And by hearing the news of the martyrdom of her brother, she felt severely sick and come and my azada unfortunately she herself she passed away away she passed away in come my azada she had one wish and it was to meet her brother in masha but once she reached but once she reached Qom, she found out that her brother had passed away. Her brother Imam Raza had passed away in Mashhad. She fell ill in the city of Qom and she passed away in Qom. My Azada, Bibi Masu, my Qom could not fulfill her wish to meet her brother for one last time in Mashhad. My Azadar, it is very important for everybody, for all Azadar, to visit the shrine, to do the ziyarat of the to do to visit the shrine and to do the ziyarat of Imam Raza in Mashhad and visit the shrine and do the ziyarat of Bibi Masumai Qom in the city of Qom because visiting these two shrines are very important and very rewarded. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My Azadar. We have concluded tonight's lecture about Imam Sajjad. Not only did we talk about Imam Sajjad, I mentioned that this was the week. These days are the commemoration of the martyrdom of our eighth Imam, Imam Raza. May Allah give us tawfiq to visit the shrine of Imam Zainul Abidin and to visit Karabobala. May Allah give us tawfiq to visit the shrine and to do the ziyarat of our eighth Imam in Mashhad Imam Raza. And may Allah give us tawfiq to visit the holy city of Qum so we can visit and do the ziyarat of the holy shrine of Bibi Masumai Qum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alim.